Good morning, and um, thank you for giving us this opportunity to express some um, thoughts and um, information for the current crisis. Um, I am an experimental materials physicist. I am the chair of the physics and material science department here at the University of Memphis. And um, thank you for this opportunity. Hey guys, good morning. Uh, my name is Michael Goyas and I'm a faculty with the civil engineering department. And uh, my main area of expertise is in uh, freight transportation with a focus on maritime uh, mostly. And uh, I'm very lucky to help uh, Sabri with the biologistics uh, cluster. It, it has affected supply chains a lot and everything starts, you know, back in January, late January, when we had the lunar year in China and everything shuts down. And then instead of reopening, you have the hit with the COVID-19 uh, and then they remain closed, which means nothing ships out of there, and then COVID-19 hits the United States, and then nothing, uh, the, the imports for the United States uh, because of demand uh, starts to slow down. So we have almost 40% decrease uh, for the China-US imports uh, in March. Uh, things uh, seem to be improving, uh, and um, there are some projections for uh, April, 17% decrease. Uh, that's year over year, just to compare apples to apples. And then 20% in May, and then 21 in June, dropping down to 12% in August. So uh, obviously because lack of demand, uh, there is not as many containers coming in, right? And, and always the because of the supply chains, the way they are structured today, you can have a very good uh, view of how the economy is gonna go when you see how the imports and exports of containers are coming uh, to the United States. And th this huge drop uh, is a very clear signal that the economy has really uh, stopped. Uh, now, the main issue, uh, one of the main issues is the, the blank sailings. So suddenly uh, liners seeing the drop in demand, they have uh, blanked a lot of their sailings, I mean, just cancel them and this is not a new thing. They used to do that in the past. In the past, they used to give like three to four weeks uh, in advance uh, notification uh, to the shipper so they could, you know, uh, make changes. But now my understanding is it's like three to four days. And they're like, we're canceling uh, our ser that, that service for, you know, from China to US. And then shippers have to try and figure out what the heck to do. Uh, so it has really affected supply chains. Uh, and I guess that's what the discussion is today, how uh, this thing is affecting supply chains and where do we go from here? So unless the, the, you know, we open up the economy and we start buying things again, and there's always the question, will we start buying at the rate that we were buying before and when will uh, the consumer feel confident enough to go back to the levels of purchasing of before COVID, right? Because the, I was reading the news today, uh, 40 million, uh, unemployed uh, so you know people start they're being afraid they're like I need to be more careful with the money that I have I cannot be spending it as I used to spend before and unfortunately the US economy is mostly a service economy right we don't have as much manufacturing here so maybe you'll see other countries like China have a faster uh, recovery but they have a lot of manufacturing we don't hear so uh, there have been a lot of effects uh, with regards to uh, COVID-19. I, I think the effects of COVID-19 is just, uh, well, one thing that it's going to do, it's going to accelerate uh, some things that they were doing already. And another thing is they're going to try a new strategy, hopefully, uh, for multi-sourcing. So the things that they were doing already, uh, you know, investing in technologies, uh, building more infrastructure, whatever they were doing before, they're still going to be doing it, but maybe they're going to accelerate it. But the other thing that they may want to have to consider now is the multi-source, because you cannot have everything, all your eggs in one basket. You cannot just have one or two uh, suppliers, because when things like this happen, you see that, okay, this is not going to work. I need to be able uh, to have multiple sources where I can get my stuff. And that's another thing that the United States may start seeing again, because this is not a new thing, 
uh, may become more of a hot topic, the, the term of nearshoring, uh, which means bring stuff closer to the United States, for example, Mexico. Uh, so do the manufacturing closer uh, or even bring it back to the United States, especially for essential items. And I'm not saying bring everything back to the United States, but the same thing that applies for companies for multi-sourcing should be the same for the, for the government, for the United States. You cannot just have, you know, uh, bring everything back because if you have a factory, let's say only one factory that does, that, that builds uh, medicine or vaccines or antibiotics and it's in uh, Tennessee and Tennessee is hit by COVID-19, you're done, that's it. So uh, it obviously it's gonna be interesting to see how uh, things will uh, change and how companies and the United States government is going to uh, take measures in the near and long term uh, to see how they're going to be prepared for if, and actually not if, when something like this happens. Uh, a lot of people have expressed that opinion and I actually I agree with them that this is not an if, it's a when. With regards to the home-based work and if companies are going to continue uh, with this, uh, I highly doubt it. Yes, they may uh, offer more flexibility than they were before, but even before COVID-19, everybody was talking about this work from home, but what companies see and big companies like uh, IBM, uh, Google, right? Uh, they all want their people to be on site because you are more productive and innovation comes when you meet with other people and you talk with other people and not like we're doing right now. Face-to-face -face collaboration because you can collaborate over Zoom and uh, my personal view is uh, they're, they're going to come back to how they were. Now, for certain uh, uh, things, they, they may continue uh, but for the majority of the people, they're, they're going to have to come back to work. It's not going to be productive, I think. Um, a good question, an interesting question, a somewhat complicated one to answer, but we've dealt with our challenges. It's been um, difficult to perform experimental materials research to the quality that we typically um, strive for. However, it has made us become more innovative in terms of what we can do when we are in the laboratories physically. So students um, have to be on a schedule. So I think in some ways it's made everyone more productive when they are in the laboratory to get as much done as possible. Um, so we have tried to deal with the challenges. Another positive outcome from this um, pandemic has been the movement towards the design of new technologies for remote sensing because everything that's um, contact based is um, frowned upon, it's dangerous and we want to avoid it. Therefore remote sensing has become the way to solve a lot of these issues and we've seen a big movement in that direction to try and come up with innovative ways for technologies that allow us to do remote sensing through layers through barriers etc so we've seen a surge of um, ideas and innovations emerge to address that issue um, so th there's been some positives and clearly some challenges that we've had to deal with. With regards to our research, uh, we have some projects where the students need to go out in the field. And obviously those projects have been uh, pretty much stopped because they cannot go out, it's not allowed. But uh, the majority of our research is done on a PC, on a computer. So that we haven't really been affected other than the fact that I cannot meet with my students one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, coming back to the whole productivity innovation. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping that's gonna go away very soon uh, so I can actually meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. So not as much effect on our research. So I would say 20% of our research has been uh, you know, put in the back burner until all this is uh, gone and we can actually go out in the field. I think 
innovations are going to emerge without us being necessarily focused on them. So as the earlier question was, how do you see this issue affecting research in the physics and material science discipline? And my response was, we're trying to manage it by using different um, tools that perhaps we hadn't necessarily taken full advantage of previously. And I think that since we are still progressing towards this um, uh, CDC recommendations and not populating laboratories, these innovations are continuing. And um, I know it doesn't answer the question specifically, but I think post COVID, 19 when the crisis is over and life returns to normal i think you will see a surge of technologies and intellectual properties in this discipline now discipline at least that has been designed and developed and emerged simply because we were trying to handle the crisis um, there's a big movement among the material science community um, to try and address issues with the virus itself and management of the spread of virus on surfaces, treatment of surfaces, understanding how one could control the boundary between the virus and the surface it comes into contact with. So there are a lot of material science related projects, thoughts and um, uh, innovation that's moving forward. And I think post the pandemic, you'll see that emerge as new intellectual properties. Before COVID-19, the, the freight industry has been, uh, you know, in, improving, in, uh, investing in technology, and that, that's just going to continue. You may be drones, uh, semi-autonomous trucks. Uh, they're just going to continue investing where they are. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going, if they're going to accelerate the investment because of COVID-19. Uh, if the price is right, if it makes financial sense, they will. Uh, but they have already been uh, investing heavily in new technology, so it's it's nothing new to them, and they're not and they're not going to stop. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that uh, you know about the e-commerce and uh, because of COVID-19, now we see more e-commerce. Well. COVID-19 or COVID-19, we were still going to see an increase in e-commerce. Yes, granted, now uh, you see part of the increase being because people cannot physically go and shop, but uh, even when COVID-19 passes and you still can go out and shop and go physically to a brick and mortar shop, but it's e-commerce increase is not going to stop. It's going to continue because the fundamentals of why it was there and the benefits that the companies uh, and the people get out of it is there. So if the fundamentals for something is not there, uh, a, a natural disaster, uh, an, an, an event, an extreme event is not gonna change how supply chains operate. It might change for that period of time, but if the basics are not there, they're not gonna continue and adopt it. So in our case here, everything was there before and it's just going to continue. Now at what rate and how uh, the rate of adoption might be affected by COVID-19, that's something to be seen, I, I cannot, Give you an educated opinion about that unfortunately if i could i would be in another business right <laughs> i think that um just to sort of wrap things up i think it, it's been a challenging time for everyone um in any sector of our community however often it's during the times of crisis that you see um people rise to the occasion and communities, businesses, infrastructure, et cetera. So I think post COVID, um, we will have access and experience to things that prior to COVID was not on our radar. And I think um, a lot of efforts will be streamlined, will be more efficient in some ways, in some capacities while trying to make up for the loss um, that we've experienced. So I think that we, um, I think as a whole, communities have learned a great deal from this crisis and hopefully will be better and stronger positioned when we've recovered.